My background is a watchmaker, and a watchmaker by passion, by, by, by family, tradition also. I'm an accountant by profession. It is a bit of science, but then a lot of office work. Got my own business in mineral processing. A retired school teacher, uh, doing photography, framing uh, with universities. Well, I yeah, just finished school last year, so... Animal welfare investigation. Uh, I used to be a fitting machinist. Well, I was uh, 16 when I started uh, to be a jeweler in Germany. And then later on, I done an apprenticeship for three and a half years as a beer watchmaker. And then I attended uh, two years uh, a school for watchmaking, a master school in Düsseldorf. I'm, uh, next year, I will be 80 years old. And, uh, uh, I uh, lectured in Switzerland with Rolex. In 1970, I arrived here in Perth. Joined the guild in Perth and realized there was no schooling, no training for apprenticeship uh, in the way they do it in Germany or in Switzerland. So I started working out uh, 20 core models, which we teach here uh, according to TAFE. Um, I, I think it's really good because it, it does it bit by bit. So it's not hard to follow. You'd be using your, your, your hands on, pretty hands on things um, one week and the next week you'd be um, sort of doing the theory side of things. So it's very well um, structured. Yep. It's easy to understand. And for the sound of it, it's um, improving all the time. And you can go home and do it at home. You can start with minimum tools and you can build your way up, but there's always something you can do at home. I think it's great. Nino's, Nino's a great teacher. We've got a lot of good equipment. I started as a teacher. Yeah, um, I was a physics teacher for 33 years and what I've changed to is having physics in action, which I love it. Well, in, in teaching watchmaking, uh, we have theory and we have a lot of practice. The theory is important because without the theory, you can't fix things. And without the practice, the same thing, you won't be able to fix things. The practice is so important that we show the students lots and lots of examples during the course of things which we do in our businesses. Uh, problems we come, uh, come across and eventually they get a good idea of many of the problems that exist in our trade. But traineeship is to our school is a possibility for young people to learn the trade. They enroll for three years and after three years they get a certificate level three in engineering and they can uh, start uh, later on their own business as a watchmaker. For example, since we started the school again, seven students from our school, they're already qualified watchmakers. They're already, seven of them, some of them got their own business, or most of them got their own business. And that is a fantastic uh, achievement for our school. And that is what we are, I'm proud of. Because there aren't many uh, watchmakers around to take apprentice, the way we teach the course is that uh, they set up their own tools and by the end of the course they have sufficient tools to be able to start their own business. So what we're aiming at to try and build up the number of watchmakers in, in Western Australia is to make sure that we uh, have people that can run their own business. Um, I can definitely see this as a viable sort of business uh, slash profession. So um, yeah, but right now it'd be limited to being a hobby, but I think in the long term it could, it could be something that can take me to make me some money. <laughs> uh, eventually I'd like to make it a job. But I want to take it further and actually start a small business uh, in a couple of years time. Um, it might first start as a hobby, but maybe later on I might, yeah, make it into a job, start my own company. Eventually, there will be enough people to take apprentice, but at the moment, this will be as far in the future. The future is here that we, first thing we uh, train young people to be watchmakers, that is there. But the future for our school is that we have certain qualified young people, really good, while, which I will be uh, lecturing later on when I'm not there anymore. And that is the future, and I think that is a fantastic thing what we achieved here in West Australia with our guild. I uh, found out the course through um, the internet. Um, it's um, something that sparked my interest because of the watches that I had. I started looking and we actually found online 
and I had actually met one of the teachers uh, some years earlier, so I sort of knew it existed, but, but then I actually found it online. Internet. <laughs> so I was just looking for clock courses, thought it was a trade, but um, found a night course and stoked. Phoned up, got the last spot, I was really lucky. If you really have won the, the study into the course and you feel that you got the passion, and you got the encourage and you really want to develop your skills, uh, I definitely recommend this. It. a beautiful course. So it's um, very straightforward and easy to follow in the sense that it's laid out well. Uh, if you go to your hands and you like mechanical things, I, I definitely recommend it. People thought it was dying, but they don't realise last year Switzerland produced 20 million mechanical watches, 20 million. At the same time, the Chinese copied those 20 million and put 40 million copies on the market, mechanical like Rolex, Omega, Longfin, and so all those watches, all, everything was mechanical in its service. And uh, all over the world there's a shortage of qualified watchmakers. And that is what our school is very important here in Western Australia and uh, all over the world now. They know that our school is producing the quality which is important for our trade to be a watchmaker. And I think uh, the future is very bright for our trade.